Welcome back to Red Business and Focus with thanks to Cork's local enterprise offices where we are supporting businesses right around Cork. This week we are heading east. We have got Susan Hurley. Susan is an East Cork potter based in Middleton where she runs her studio creating and teaching pottery but that is only one feather in her cap. She also has a gift shop where she stocks items made in Ireland only from small independent makers. Looking forward to hear about her journey and importantly about how sustainability is key to her business. Susan, you're very welcome. Lovely Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Uh, everybody gets 30 seconds to talk about their business. So okay. the stage is yours. Over you go. Okay. So, uh, yes, Susan Hurley He, I'm a potter. I run a gift gallery in Middleton and a working studio, a teaching studio. Um, I create a collection of wear called Beachwear, where I use local clay to create um, my own work and I sell it in my shop. Everything we stock in the shop is made in Ireland. That's very important. It's reducing carbon footprint. It's made in Ireland and it's supporting the art and craft industry in Ireland, which makes a huge contribution to the economy right across the board. Now, there's a lot to unpack there. And I, yes. I, I, there's a load of stories that I want you to tell, but I want to begin with the pottery. Okay. Because I, I'm always fascinated by it. Um, when you see it, you can see wonderful work. But you not only were happy enough to produce the wonderful work, it's about how you make the pottery that became important. So tell us about that. So um, I suppose I made a decision to begin with that I was going to create in small batches. I wasn't going to do production pottery. I wanted to create smaller batches and... It was, so when people were buying it, they were making um, a decision to buy it and they would have it for life um, and reducing the need to actually purchase um, pottery over and over again, cheaper pottery that's imported. Um, so pottery for life. So I create my work on the wheel, but I actually dig local clay as well from around East Cork and I infuse that into my glaze. It's a collection called Beachwear. And so when you look at the surface, it has a beach effect, my version of a beach effect on it. Now, you must be an incredibly patient person because that sounds like the path that is the hardest possible one you could get to come up with the product that you have. Do you know what it is? It is a very long, but that's ceramics. It's a long and it is a type of patience um, because you can from beginning to end, you know, it's weeks before you actually have something at the end. And each step is so important that sometimes I think it's, it's amazing that we even have pottery at the end of it. Um, but it's a beautiful experience. It's clay, you know, it's coming from the ground. And for me personally, as an artist, to be able to connect with my environment to that degree and then create work is, is, a, is a wonderful experience. Do people commission them? Uh, do you have unique pieces? Are they, yes. can you get a collection? How does it work? I do, um, I stock my shop um, in Middleton with beachwear. So I have coffee cups and tea mugs, bowls, plates. I only stock my shop and it sells out quite quickly because I only stock my own shop and nowhere else. I also do um, exhibition work with Cork Potters and Ceramics Ireland. And I do get asked to do commission pieces and I do them when I can, but I like to stay focused on, the, I suppose the, the beach wear and the functional wear because it gives people to have an opportunity, the opportunity to have a piece of art in their home that they can use every day. Now, if you weren't busy enough with all of that, uh, you do have the shop which you stock other Irish uh, works in as well. Absolutely. And you also work then with community groups as well to kind of share the art That's a little it. bit. That's it. So the gift gallery, um, it's people like myself. We create in small batches, but we do rely on it for our living. So the majority, everything is made in Ireland. So we've basket makers, glass, um, you know, badly made books, you know, from Cork. Yeah, we've um, had them on the audio podcast yeah, before. Brilliant. Sean's brilliant. Um, we've got, I've got other pottery. We've all fine artists, all made in Ireland. We have a lot of local within the East Cork area because we've got so many makers and artists in the area. Um, but it's all made in Ireland. Um, I suppose number one, um, it's supporting the art and craft industry in Ireland, which is huge. Uh, number two, we are lowering our carbon um, footprint by not importing from overseas. And art and craft is very important in our country. We're renowned for well, you, you share the art and craft. I mean, one of the things that I like, one of the things I like about what you do is that you share it. You know, you don't keep it yourself. You would try to encourage other people it's, to it's take it up. It's, it's very important. And I've been doing that for 25 years. And I have an urban pottery studio and I chose it in the town um, 
to normalise creativity in our community. So teaching has been a key part of what I do from the very beginning. And I would work with, um, you know, there's teens, I've had tots, there's um, the, you know, the kids, adults, um, adult mental health groups, working with schools, doing installations. So I work with, I always said in the very beginning when I owned my studio, it was a studio for everybody. So it is for everybody. So I've worked with so many different um, groups and I'm in a very lucky position mm. um, that um, there's many people enjoy wanting to work with pottery in the studio. We're going to hear a lot over the course of this series about the Green for Micro programme, which Absolutely. is uh, something that the local enterprise office do to yeah. promote sustainable practices amongst businesses. Yeah. You kind of tick every box on that. You're, you're, you're getting your material locally. You're making sure that it is durable. It isn't disposable at all. You want to hold on to it forever. Yeah. You ticked every box, as I said. We do. I suppose we do. And I think as makers, um, a lot of craftspeople automatically work in a very sustainable way anyway, um, because we're very conscious of the material that we're buying and that we're using. Um, but it was a, a very interesting experience. I worked with Ronan, um, Ronan Murphy from um, uh, Green Vision in Carlo. And it was a brilliant experience because I suppose when we hear the word sustainability, and it is a buzzword, that and it can take so long to get your business to a point where it's working and it's flowing um, and it's happening, that to suddenly think that you've got to change your business model can be quite daunting. So my experience was fantastic with them um, in the sense that they were able to point out, number one, how I am already ticking boxes, but also carved a very clear path for me in going forward to make my business more sustainable and therefore how I can attract more clients to the business um, and, let, and let my community know how by buying in my gift gallery that they are doing their bit for the environment as well and for the sustainability of businesses within the community. And um, one of the things I love about the story that you're telling is that look, it's notoriously hard to make money out of art. It's really, it's nigh and impossible. Uh, unless you're clever and creative in the same way that you're producing the art. And I think that's an example of what you're doing there is you've taken something that's your passion and you've turned it into a business, but not only supporting yourself, but supporting other artists right yeah. around the country. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting one. Um, I think there, there can be this thing around art and business, like they can't coexist. And it, uh, to me, it's, it's like a myth at this stage because they can you know, and creative people are the best in the world at figuring out, figuring out solutions. We are natural, um, critical thinkers and, you know, we need to remember that ourselves and not go with the stereotype that business and art don't exist, that we can't do, we can, you know. What's the website if people want to look you up or how can they find out more it's about you? It's ceramics.com and you will find me there and about my work. Um, all the information, you can click on that, contact me um, in order to book a family workshop, create your own wear, your own sustainable wear, um, to come and check out the gift gallery. Um, any information, we, we can work it for you. Susan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Susan Thank Hurley. You. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Red Business in Focus. Make sure you join us next week. We're going to have Pratish Chambath of Capriso in the spotlight. Pratish comes from a small village on the southwest coast of India. He came to Cork, though. He launched the business as a cloud-based smart accounting platform to integrate and automate all aspects of accounting. I wouldn't have a clue where to start, but he's going to fill us in on his business, but also how the local enterprise office helped him bring it to life. That's next time on Red Business in Focus, with thanks to Cork's local enterprise offices.